Hello you lovely lot, my name is Max, welcome back to my YouTube channel and another Nottingham Forest video. Yes, we are back after a couple of weeks away, wrapping up promotion to the Premier League. I'm currently working on some bigger projects for the channel, so I thought I would turn my attention to some shorter form transfer and tactic related videos and today is going to be the first in that series where hopefully we are going to be detailing that right wing back position for Nottingham Forest why it's so important and also who we should be targeting to bring in in the summer as it looks more and more increasingly as we go day by day that Jed Spence probably won't be coming to us in the Premier League next season. In terms of where I've got my data from for this video just to give you a bit of context I usually use who scored and fbref for primary data and I've also used the recruitment plan and the fantastic work on Twitter by Liam Henshaw. He is fantastic if you're a Forest fan, drop him a follow over on Twitter. I'll leave his link in the description below as well as a link to his recruitment plan. It's a fantastic in-depth analysis of the squad as it is at the moment and also some of his personal targets, some of which line up with who I'm going for and I'm going to be using some of his data as well uh, that he's sort of accued from Y Scout uh, throughout this video. So thank you very much to him for collating all that. And of course it goes without saying if you are new around these parts don't forget to drop a like on this video and subscribe down below. We're pretty close to around 650 subscribers. My goal is to hit 750 by the time the new season starts and hopefully you'll be joining me on our Premier League journey with Nottingham Forest next season. Without any further ado, let's start talking about that right wing back position. So as I kind of mentioned in that little intro bit, it is looking less and less likely that Jed Spence will be joining the club on a permanent deal from Middlesbrough this summer. So I have thought through a few targets that I think Nottingham Forest should go for. Uh, a couple of them are the ones who we are probably most heavily linked to in the press, and the third one is a wild card. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is talking a bit about the position itself, what it actually requires from a potential candidate for that position, and for that we're gonna be using a little tactics board. Okay, so as you can see on screen, I've got myself a little tactics board, and I've set up what is basically the first choice Nottingham Forest 11 throughout the course of this season. You could argue maybe position here and there, but this is majority what Forrest have been playing this season. Obviously, we've got the three defenders, McKenna, Cook and Worrell, and across that midfield, we have Jed Spence down that right-hand side, and his role in that team has been as an aggressive ball progressor and as somebody who can get us into the final third and help create chances. He's very important at picking the ball up on that right-hand side, and with Forrest being so ball-dominant down that right-hand side, 41% of our touches come in down that side of the pitch. Second highest, I believe, in the league in terms of a side bias in the championship this season. And Spence is a big part of that. He gets a lot of touches down that right-hand side and at times can be touchline tight or he can come inside and underlap for Brennan Johnson. Now, as Jed Spence gets forward, he's pretty much acting as an auxiliary attacker, an extra attacker, and doing those underlapping or overlapping runs around Brennan Johnson. Joe Worrell will basically step out and become kind of a nominal right back in this system. The defence and the midfield tends to shift across like so. And as you can see, the team compacts and overloads one side of the pitch with Worrell playing almost as a right back, allowing Spence extra room down that right hand side to really push forward and be as aggressive as possible. And in terms of his ball carrying with Brennan Johnson basically having this free role on the right hand side of our attack, their interchanges are really important. And in sort of attacking positions, Spence's ability to either overlap and get the ball down to the byline for Forrest, he's also able to underlap with Brennan Johnson, his work around the edge of the box is fantastic. Obviously, his ability to come inside as well or go down to the byline on that underlapping run is a really useful asset. And I think especially for Tottenham, you're going to see him probably getting wider more than more than not. Kulostevsky is more of an inside forward in the sort of traditional mould. Uh, so you'll probably see Spence getting quite wide on the outside. But his ability to underlap as well is almost unrivaled in the championship in terms of right wing backs. The one weakness you would probably argue that is in Spence's game is his lack of passing ability. He's not the strongest passer in the world of all the strengths that he does have. When you do find him in these sort of byline positions, he does like to work it back. James Garner's very good at getting onto the ball in those positions, helping to create chances. Brennan Johnson much the same in those sort of half space areas. But his abilities, his strengths, where he really excels in this Forest team is getting the ball in these wide positions and driving us into the final third. And that is exactly what Spurs are going to be getting next season and exactly what we need to be looking at replacing for Forest 
next season. So now let's talk about some of the options for this right wing back position for Nottingham Forest next season. Like I mentioned in the intro, there's two conventional names who have been linked to the club over the course of this summer. And then I've got a wildcard entry who I'd like to discuss in a little bit of detail towards the end of this video. So the first player is probably the player we've been linked to the heaviest, I would say, in the press for that right wing back position. And that is Liverpool's Welsh right back, Neko Williams. The 21 year old Welshman made 15 league appearances last season, both for his parent club, Liverpool, and for Fulham during the second half of the season, notching an impressive two goals and three assists, averaging out at a goal or assist every three games. Defensively, he was extremely solid for Fulham in the championship, completing around four tackles and interceptions for the Cottagers, around the same as Spence this season, albeit from a smaller sample size, whilst he was only dribbled past around one time per match compared to every other game for Jed Spence in the championship this year. That being said, he does a lot more defensive work in the box, more clearances and more blocks than the England under 21 international. So all round, possibly a better defensive prospect than Jed Spence. His ball progression also lines up pretty well compared to Spence when you put them side by side, completing around three and a half progressive carries per 90 compared to four from Jed Spence and around eight progressive passes per match compared to four from Spence. Whilst an inferior ball carrier, he is probably offering more in possession and in build-up, all round probably a better passer and creating more chances per 90 than Jed Spence and also completing double the crosses as England under 21 international, which for a team who doesn't really cross that often would definitely be a really good extra utility to have in our arsenal, the ability to get the ball in the box from crossing. Overall, Nico Williams seems like a really good, well-rounded option at right back and obviously has a little bit of Premier League experience with Liverpool in the past, something that Spence does not have. He is a little bit better defensively and a little bit more creative from progressive passing. That being said, he is probably an inferior ball pro uh, progressor through carrying the ball and we will be sacrificing that blistering pace from Jed Spence and I think there are few players we could replace Spence with that would match the pace and physicality that he has because he is one of the best in the league at doing that. Okay then, so the second player I wanted to talk about was Arsenal's Ainsley Maitland-Niles, a player devoid of confidence and game time over the last couple of years and I think someone who would really thrive on the love and the affection of the City Ground faithful should he put in a good stint at the club over the course of the next season if he were to join us this summer. The 24 year old spent the second half of last season on loan with Jose Mourinho's Roma in which he racked up just eight appearances and less than 500 minutes over the course of half a season. Despite this he will be a valuable asset for Arsenal and could be a pricey one for the Reds. Homegrown obviously and comes with nearly 100 Premier League appearances before the age of 24 although I do think alone may be a more cash viable option for the Reds especially if we're looking at strengthening and attacking midfield and up front. In terms of his stats, although limited in his appearances the last couple of seasons, they do line up pretty well and when you look at it, he completes around eight and a half defensive actions per match and ranks pretty highly for his blocks, in particular in the top 6% of wingbacks for that metric. He's also a really good presser, again in the top 20% of wingbacks in Europe for pressures per 90, which can make him a really good defensively solid option for that wingback position should we look to be a little bit more conservative in the Premier League. In possession, he ranks solidly, but not really that spectacular for the position. Around four progressive passes per 90, four and a half progressive carries per 90, which is pretty solid in fairness, but isn't the strongest dribbler in the world. Although having played in central midfield at times over the course of his career, you could argue maybe it misleads his stats a little bit. Attack wise, he's also pretty solid again, around 0.14 expected goals and assists per 90 over the past of the last 365 days, which is very solid for a player in his position. I would offer some good attacking value and a little bit more a balance on that right hand side, I would say. Overall, I would say Maitland-Niles is probably my least favourite of the three options, although the one with the most Premier League experiences, very much a, uh, a jack of all trades, master of none kind of player. And you can really see that obviously with that flexibility uh, and his ability to sort of utilise most positions in the midfield and on the wing back positions. Generally, I just don't think you can have enough of these kinds of players in your squads, especially in the Premier League players who can play three, four different positions. He could play either side of wing back. He could play in that midfield. If you really needed him to, he could probably drop into a deeper midfield position as well. I'm sure he would do a fantastic job. 
The only question we is wages and possibly getting him on a permanent transfer. I would maybe look at getting him in on loan as a cover option for whoever we bring in permanently in the summer. Okay then, so that brings us on to our final player, a man who Forrest haven't been linked to in the press and to be fair, someone who I actually haven't seen linked with anybody despite having a really, really solid season, being a really talented player and that is Torino's Wilfried Singo. A 21 year old Ivorian international is a really exciting prospect in Serie A this season. Get Getting seven goals and assists over the course of his 36 league appearances, racking up around two and a half thousand minutes over the course of this season for a side who finished 10th in Serie A this season with the fifth best defence, conceding 41 goals from their 38 games. He completes a very reasonable eight defensive actions per match, although this is propped up by his amazing ability in the air, winning two aerial duels, it's putting him in the top 12% of wing backs for that metric. And that's very unsurprising for somebody who is six foot three inches tall and absolute mammoth playing at right wing back. He is also really decent in possession and he's a very technically sound footballer, completing five progressive carries per 90 and one and a half dribbles per 90 as well. He is more progressive than Spence passing the ball, but he's not that frequent a dribbler when you compare him to the England under 21 international. He's very good at getting touches in the penalty box though, very good at getting the ball into the box, historically through both carrying and passing, and maybe just takes his time and uh, picks and chooses the right moments when he actually wants to carry the ball or pass the ball far upfield. And that leads us really nicely into his attacking metrics where he thrives. He's such a good player in the final third. 0.18 expected goals and assists over the course of the last year and also ranks in the top 5% of wingbacks in Europe for getting shots off at around one and a half per 90. He's always been someone historically as well, like I mentioned earlier, who is really good at getting the ball into the box, either through carrying the ball or through passing it. And you can really see him thriving in a very aggressive wing back system where we are so dominant down that right hand side, you can really see him doing some damage. Overall of the three options that I've highlighted, Singo is probably the best attacker and probably the weakest defender, I would argue. And certainly is something a little bit different when you compare him to Maitland Niles and Nico Williams. And would probably be a lot less money when you compare him to the two, obviously not being homegrown and also not having that Premier League tax and coming in from a higher up Premier League side also his wages shouldn't be too too much of an issue again whilst he's not the strongest defender in the world or the best player in possession he is a th really frightening attacking prospect and a six foot three and pretty rapid he could be a really physically dominant player down the right hand side much like Jed Spence was for us in the championship last season but that there concludes my analysis of three right wing back targets for Nottingham Forest and a little bit of backstory on how that position unfolds for the Reds when they play their matches. Be sure to let me know in that comment section down below who you would think would be the best target for us to go for. Personally, I'm leaning towards either Nico Williams or getting in Wilfried Singo and then maybe loaning in Maitland Niles if we needed some cover. The fact he's versatile and can play in midfield as well, I think is a really good asset for the Arsenal midfielder. And of course, if you're new around here, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to the channel whilst you're down. They'll be greatly appreciated as we head towards 750 subs by the beginning of next season. With that being said, thank you so much for watching. Enjoy your weekend, Reds. I will catch you later.